Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to rename, move, copy, and delete files within the Linux operating system. So again, we're using Ubuntu 18.04 for the demonstrations today, but this should be the same across any Linux operating system. Uh, you should be able to use these commands. Uh, there's no real tricks uh, with these particular commands other than it is a little bit weird with the renaming process. So an important thing to understand in in the Linux world, at least at the command line, if you were going to rename a file, you actually use the move command instead. Uh, so this may seem just a little odd. So there's no specific rename command. What you do is you use the move command, the MV command, and essentially you move uh, the name of the file to be a different name of the file. So basically, if you just want to rename a file, you do MV, what the old file name is, what the new file name is, and that is the renaming process. That's the only that's the only kind of weirdness in the Linux world. Just remember, in order to rename, you actually use the move command, and that's about it. Uh, now, the demonstration that I'm going to show you today, we are the owners. So Bob is the owners uh, of the files that we're going to be interacting with today. Uh, so I'm not going to need to use the sudo command, the super user do command, in order to uh, interact with the files uh, for deleting, for removing, uh, copying anything like that uh, just realize that if you are not the owner so if you're administering a system and for some reason the files that you're dealing with you're not the owners of those files you may have to plug in sudo beforehand in order to do some of these actions so if you're interacting with files that your user owns we'll talk about permissions later in another video Basically, if you're dealing with files that your user owns, you can just simply use the commands. Uh, if you're dealing with files your user account does not own, you may have to plug in the sudo in front of that uh, in order to be able to do things such as delete the files. But anyways, let's go over uh, to the computer and I can show you how the commands work and how simple this is. So here we are at my Ubuntu server. Again, this is just a standard Ubuntu 18.04. This is running within VirtualBox, so stock standard uh, server installation. Uh, whatever server installation you're using should work the same. Uh, so now let us log in. So of course, we have our username of Bob and our super secret password of one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we hit enter and we are now logged in. I will hit clear to clear the screen. Uh, I will do PWD. So this command shows us what folder we are currently in. So we are in the Bob folder within the home folder within the root directory. I will then do LS. So this will list the files and folders within the Bob folder, just so I know what's going on. And so I can see that I have a folder. So there's a folder here called folder that's in blue and there are no other files. So the first thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need a file to work with. I'm going to need something to play around with. Um, and so I'm going to create a file using Vim. Uh, so I like Vim. <laughs> oh, I've been getting so much crap about Vim. I don't care what you use. We just need a file. I'm going to use Vim. So Vim is the, uh, the file editor that I like to use. Press enter and then we are going to give a name for Vim. So basically uh, we're going to create a new file called test using Vim. So Vim space, whatever the name of the file you want it to be is, we are going to hit enter. So we can see down here, test new file. So we have created a new file called test. I honestly do not care what is in this file. So from here, I will do colon. So colon breaks us out. W is for save. Q is for quit. So colon uh, gets us into to the little command within Vim. Uh, w equals write, Q equals quit. So basically save and quit, I hit enter. Then all I do is I hit LS, and now we can see that I have a folder called folder and a file called test. So since we're messing around with files, uh, now we can deal with that. Uh, let me clear the screen again. And so now that I have a file called test, uh, the first thing that I want to do is rename that file. Uh, so in order to rename the file, I'm going to use the move command. Again, it's an important thing in the Linux world. For whatever reason, there's no specific rename command. There is a move command. All the move command is is MV. MV is the move command, space, uh, the file that you're going to be moving or copying, space, 
and then where you want it to go and what you want the name to be. So this is one of those things you have to be very careful about because the move command is also the rename command. So one of the things you do have to be careful about in the Linux world is you can be moving a file and at the exact same time accidentally rename the file. So let's say you're moving the PHP INI file or you're moving some configuration file. Let's say you move the file and fat finger it while you're doing it. You could move it and then rename it. And then if there are services or other, uh, other things on the server that need to interact with that file, you may then run into some issues. So you do have to be careful about this. So let's say you're moving the php.ini file for some reason. And so you do mv, you know, php.ini2 to wherever it's going. And then instead of doing php.ini, you do php.ini. Right? That's a different file. That's a completely different file. So you move and rename the php.ini file, and you might run into some issues. So do be careful about that. Let's say move, test. Uh, what are we going to call it? Uh, let's do test. Uh, let's just call it a backup file. So test.bak. Uh, so we are basically, we are going to be changing the name of the file called test to being test.bak. We hit enter. We do ls, and now what we can see is we still have that folder that we had before, but now we no longer have a file called test. We have a file called test.bak. Uh, so that is how you rename. So let me rename that again. So I'm going to move test.bak, and I'm going to move it back to being a test. So that's all you have to do to rename, hit enter, we do ls, and now we have the file called test again. Now let's actually do a move. Let's actually do a move. Uh, to do a move, then all we need to do is we simply need to do the move command, mv, test, and then we're going to do space, and then we're going to say where we want this, this, uh, this file move to. And so since we have this folder here, I'm simply just going to do folder. So it's going to go to folder, forward slash, and then what the name is. Because again, you can move and rename at the same time. I'm just going to call it test. So I'm going to move test from the folder that it's currently in into the folder and call it test. Hit enter. If I hit ls now, we can see the test file is no longer here. If I change directory to folder, now I'm in the folder directory and I do ls, we can see the test file is now there. So I've been able to move the uh, uh, the uh, the test file from the folder that was in into the folder. I can do the move again. I can do mv, and then I can do test, and then I can do uh, dot dot. So this should go up one level to test. Hit enter. So now if I do ls, we can see that there's nothing in this folder anymore. I change directory. I go up one level. So period period brings you up one level. Now I'm up. I do uh, the ls again, and we can see that the file is now uh, back up in the original directory. So test is now sitting there. So that is how you rename and how you move files in Ubuntu. So now let's try to do some copying. Uh, with that, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clear the screen. So I have a nice clean screen. So we know we have the test file. So let's imagine that this test file is a configuration file. Well, it's, it's, it's the test.ini file. You know, we're going to start going in there. We're going to start modifying uh, the test.ini file for whatever reason. So imagine this with uh, Apache or PHP or Squid. Oh my golly, have you ever seen a Squid configuration file? Squid is awesome. That configuration file is a mess. One of the problems you get into, though, one of the problems you get into, though, is you, you start going into the configuration file, you start editing things. What happens if you edit something accidentally or totally screw something up, right? Then all of a sudden the service stops working. Right? You screwed up the configuration file. So one of the things you should always do before you start messing around with any configuration file, whether it's for Squid or PHP INI or Apache or anything else, is you should always create a backup. You should create a .bak uh, file, copy of that file, so that if you do something stupid, you have a backup to, to restore from. Right? That seems pretty simple. So in order to create a backup, all you have to do is use the copy command. So you do cp. For the, for the, the file that we're referencing. So we have the, that test file that we're referencing. And then all you do is you give the a new name. So you're creating a copy this time. So the original will stay where it's at, and I'm creating a copy. And so again, if you're creating a backup file, you normally do a period, B-A-K, 
just how it works in Linux world. You know, so basically what we're doing here is we say copy the file called test and the new, the copy of it will be called test.bak. Uh, then we hit enter. Then all I have to do is I go to ls, I do l, I don't have to do l there, I just can do ls. And now we can see I've got the folder, I've got the original test file, and I've got the backup uh, of the test file, so the test.bak. So that's all there really is uh, for copying. Again, you can do, uh, you can actually dump a file into a folder. So I could do test, um, and then I do go to um, folder, and then I could do test.bak. So this is actually in the folder, right? So I can do that, hit enter. Uh, now, if I go here, ls, so I still have the test and the test.bak as I had before. I can change directory, go into folder, ls here, and now you can see I have a test.bak here. So again, so maybe uh, maybe on your server you just have one uh, folder for all the backup files for your configurations. So you can simply do the copy, you know, dump it, dump the the copy into that one centralized folder, and then you can recover it if you need it. Uh, from there, uh, the only thing we need to be able to do now is we need to be able to delete. Uh, so in the Linux world, delete is the rm command. So rm uh, then you do space and then you delete whatever file it is you're trying to delete so test.bak right so i'm in you always have to make sure where you're at right so i'm in the folder so let's go back let's just make sure let's just make sure where we know where we're at okay so we do pwd pwd shows us we're in the folder called folder in the, the folder called bob in home right so we know where we're at so okay it's like okay I don't think the configuration changes or whatever else. I'm confident with it. I want to delete this particular backup file. So all I do is I do rm space test.bak and hit enter. We do ls. And as we can see, there is nothing any longer in the folder. Now, one of the interesting things, though, with the remove command is that you can remove multiple files at the same time. Uh, so let's go up one level. Let's go back into that Bob folder. Let me clear the screen. Okay, so up here we do ls and we take a look. And so we've got folder, obviously, but then we've got a test file and a test.bak file here. Now let's say I'm looking at this and like, okay, well, I, I did this project, I, I did this demonstration. I want to get rid of both of these files at the same time. Uh, it's no big deal. I just do rm test. So I do the first file I want to delete, space test.bak. The second file I want to delete, so on and so forth. And then all I have to do is I hit enter. Both files have been deleted at the exact same time. I do ls and we can see and now all I have left is the folder. Uh, so that's really all there is to renaming, moving, copying, and deleting files uh, within Linux. Uh, in order to rename, you use the move command, the mv command. Uh, in order to move, you use the move command, <laughs> the mv command. In order to copy, you use, use the cp command. Uh, in order to delete, you use the rm command. Uh, the important thing that I will remind you with all of this is I was the owner of the file that I created in order to do this. Uh, so I did not have to use sudo anywhere. If you were an administrator on a system and for some reason you need to go in and tweak something and you may not actually be the owner of the file that you're interacting with, you may have to use sudo in order to be able to have the privileges to be able to do whatever you're trying to do. So I guess that's, that's the one thing. So if you're the owner um, of the file uh, and you're trying to do any of these, obviously it works. Uh, if you're not the owner, just realize you may have to use sudo. Other than that, as with much, many things in Linux, it's really easy as long as you know the commands. If you know the commands, it's simple. If you don't know the commands... <laughs> So that's all there is to renaming, moving, copying, and deleting files in Ubuntu, or really any distribution of Linux. Uh, it all should be more or less the same. As with all of these commands, there are options and arguments that you can add. 
Again, there's a whole plethora of them. Most of the time it doesn't matter, so I didn't go into it today. But if you're trying to do something with a file, you're trying to see if you can do something a little bit more specific, or possibly you're running into issues, like you may have to force a delete, you may have to force something, uh, just go to the man page or just go to Google, take a look at the arguments and options, and uh, one of those arguments or options may do what you need to have accomplished. So just, just remember that. Again, it's very important to understand uh, in the Linux world, is that you have the command and the command does a lot uh, but a lot of times the arguments and the options that you add to that command uh, really are what allow you to do whatever you're trying to do uh, so just keep that in mind you, you should be fine again you might again a force or something you may have to use normal normally you'll be fine uh, the only issue again as an administrator of a system as an administrator of a system the only thing that you may honestly run into is just simply if you are not an owner of the file that you're dealing with you may have to use sudo enabled in order to do whatever you're trying to accomplish just to give that those escalated uh, privileges to allow you to have permission uh, but otherwise everything should be relatively simple uh, so with that as always I enjoyed doing this video and look Look forward to seeing you at the next one.